As a night photographer, I am fascinated by darkness. Today, I want to take you on a journey through darkness where we will reimagine light, time, and the world around us. But before the darkness comes what many photographers call the golden hour. The golden hour is that time just before sunset when the sun dips to six degrees or less above the horizon and you can sometimes find the most beautiful light you will ever see in the day. But today, I want us to visualize a world where we are not shackled to the sun, a world where we are not tied to Apollo as he rides his chariot of fire from east to west each day. Today, we will be the masters of light. Today, light will follow our whims. And as the mythologist Joseph Campbell would say, any journey of transcendence must first begin with a descent into darkness. And so that is where we shall begin today. This is my world. This is my square one. No light, no moon, no sun, no stars. And then suddenly, there is light. Not much, in fact, you can barely make out the first few rows. Yet I hold light in my hand. And this ability is what allows me to create this. What I hold in my hand is endless possibilities. I hold an entire photo studio in my hand. And with just a few lumens more, this light can turn into this. Now, this light may not seem ordinary, but it represents the way in which we are all used to experiencing the world with a single light source. Normally, the sun, but here and now, a spotlight. Now, I see the world not by one light, but by one light at a time. Light is essential to photography. In fact, if you break photography down to its etymological roots, you find that you get photo, light, and graphy, writing. Light is the ink of photography. In fact, in 1839, when William Henry Fox Talbot, considered by many to be the father of modern photography, first described his process of creating reproducible images exposed with sunlight, he called them photogenic drawings. My technique, painting with light in the dark, is based on the works of da Vinci and other Renaissance masters who used sfumato to add subtle layers of illumination and tonal depths to their paintings. Rather than rely on pigmented inks, I use light as a source. And I can literally paint with that light. I use a flashlight as a brush. And as I add each brush stroke, I add another layer of illumination. And as I add another layer of illumination, we add another layer of light. And you can witness this light building until what you finally see is that end result, the portal. And when I first discovered this technique of being able to combine lights the way that you just saw, it was revolutionary to me. You mean that I can combine the light from a flashlight, the light from the moon, the light from a passing plane, and the light from planets and stars so far away it takes millions of years for that light to reach Earth? Yes. When I first discovered this concept, I recognized that the entire universe can become a source of illumination, and the entire world can become your brush. What you see here in the far background, that orange glow, is the sodium vapor lights from the Turkey Point nuclear station. The light piercing that cloud is a passing plane, and just above and below that cloud, you can see our solar neighbors, Venus and Mars. Every photograph begins in darkness. 
Every photograph is born in my imagination. And every photograph begins like this. I take hundreds of exposures over hours, and I photograph my subjects from hundreds of different angles. What you see here took four years for me to find. It took four years for me to find this island being born. It took four years for reality to match fantasy. And when I finally discovered this tree, I photographed for over two hours from 30 separate angles to create this. And my work is about more than just light. It is about perspective and time itself. What you see here, these streaks, are not some graphic element I added just for fun, nor is it some rare meteor shower captured by chance. They're stars, generic, everyday stars. To create this effect, I left my shutter open for uh, an equivalent hour exposure. And what's interesting about images like these is within that hour, you can actually see 1 24th the Earth's full rotation in a day. I, I love star trail exposures because when you see photographs like this, it's like the entire universe is painting us with light. And the really interesting thing about these is they show you our place not only in the universe, but here on Earth. Looking at this image, I can tell that I'm standing somewhere in the northern hemisphere, and based on the direction of the stars, I know that I'm facing almost due west. This image took years of preparation. It took patience, it took resilience. Something photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson could certainly appreciate. Cartier-Bresson famously spoke of capturing the decisive moment. Now, what Bresson was talking about was occurring in fractions of a second, and those fractions have only gotten smaller with time. With the work coming out of the MIT Media Lab today, photography has become possible at the femtosecond level. A femtosecond is one quadrillionth of a second. You can create your own decisive moment whether it is a quadrillionth of a second or like the work of photographer Michael Wesley who creates images that are two years in the making, you can create your own golden hour. You can create your own decisive moment. Now, the square one of painting with light happened in the late 1800s when Etienne Jules Marais was experimenting with chronophotography and kinesiology. And his goal was to create a visual representation of the motion of people and animals. So he would take these long exposures and attach lights to different people and animals in motion. And throughout that long exposure, he could actually see where they went. Painting with light started with a functional purpose. But soon thereafter, it gained a functional and artistic purpose. 1941, Moscow. While everyone else was running for cover, Margaret Burke White, on assignment for Life magazine, ran to the rooftop of her hotel to capture this image of the Luftwaffe raining down fire and death on the city. This image is striking because it shows us something else we wouldn't be able to see without that long exposure. We can actually see the patterns of the anti-aircraft fire and the patterns of the bombs as they hit Moscow. Shortly after that, Guillaume Milly captured this famous image of Pablo Picasso literally painting with light. Picasso was so fascinated with this process, he created over 30 separate light paintings with Millet. The work of Guillaume Millet, Margaret Burke White, and other innovators really changed the world's perspective on photography, light, and time. And perspective is key to more than just art. It is how we experience the world. You see the world differently than I do, and it is these differences that we celebrate here at TED. What you see here represents a pixel. A pixel is the smallest digital unit of a digital image. Now, by the definition I just gave you, that's not actually a pixel. It's a little bit bigger, but we're here at TED. Let's use some creative license. 
In the short story, Flatland, by Edwin Abbott Abbott, we meet a square. We meet a square whose entire universe consists of just two dimensions, length and width. And it's not until a sphere enters his world that he recognizes that his rea perception of reality is not the only perception of reality. Camera companies will try to sell you on the most pixels, on the most megapixels, as being the next latest and greatest camera. You can create amazing images with 1,000 pixels or 47 million pixels. It's not about the number of pixels. It's how you use them. I'm only able to create images like these, images of a digital tapestry woven together layer by layer with the help of assistants that are willing to stand in shark-infested waters with me because, I know, because they share in my vision. They share in my perspective. And it took me eight years to develop painting with light in the dark. It took eight years for me to reinvent the way that I see the world. And it's to the point now where literally, as I'm here standing in front of you at TEDx and I look at the spotlights, the house lights, I can already see how I would paint you all with light. I can already see where I would introduce the lights in the aisles, how I would add up lighting and down lighting, what the intensity of those lights would be. I can pre-visualize a finished photograph before I take my first exposure. And it is that ability that allows me to create images like these. It is what allows me to take the ordinary and show it in an extraordinary way. Tonight, when you go home, you will walk through your front door, you will turn on the light switch, and you will expect those lights to go on. Now, if they don't, your first thought will invariably be that something is wrong, that there is something wrong with the darkness. People say that something goes bump in the night. I say that something does go bump in the night, and it is creativity. It is potential. The Tao Te Ching speaks of usefulness in what is not there. A, a bowl is full of potential, when it is empty. So I say the darkness is that potential. Thank you.